table, uh, both of which you've already received prior and we've used, but they kind of refer back to things that I wanted to just talk, talk a little bit about today. So um, I want to rethink about um, redoing the timeline and the order in which we were going to um, think about what we were going to accomplish in implementing 4K. Okay, so you have what we currently thought that's the original, and now I'm going to just twist your thinking a little bit on that. Um, uh, what I did uh, since we talked last was I put out a um, survey to school districts in the state of Wisconsin that are on certain listservs for 4K, and 29 of the school districts um, provided some information for me, so it really helped in, um, and they were school districts from all over the state, as well as I had several people send me all kinds of 4K information. Um, and then some who are thinking at 4K said, can I get that information when you're done with it? So as a result of looking through all of that information, kind of sifting through, there were lots of copies of handbooks and contracts and all kinds of things, but a few things kind of maybe um, go to Mr. Yoke and say, you know, I think we have to come back and rethink a little bit of a few things, okay? So there was great variance to the programs at hand that were in um, that were in these school districts. Some were only in the public schools. Some in the area are only in the public schools. Um, when asked, was the main choice of where, how you chose to have the programs um, due to your space within the district as a whole, um, um, some said no. Their decisions were based on public relations more so than space availability. So I guess what I'm saying is there was a lot of um, variance between what the school boards decided to do in the different districts, okay? Some related a lot to giving parents choice in the whole matter. So, uh, so that's one piece. The other piece that I think in talking with Chris and I talking to the bus company about is there's a lot of um, questions related to the cost of transportation that you're going to have to wrestle with. Um, these little four-year-olds, or uh, uh, are they going to get door-to-door -door service? Are you going to drop them off at their door? Are you going to drop them off um, within a mile of their of their door? Are you going to use the state law required two-mile? Is it going to be different in the morning when they're riding the bus, perhaps with all the other children, than in the after, you know the midday when they're the only children maybe getting out on a stop? Those are some big decisions that um, we're going to need to have you um, weigh in on so we can talk about, you know, costs related to that. Um, and then, um, do we want to supervise the program of 4K or do we want to supervise the program of 4K and the staff of 4K? Okay, so let's just think about that for a minute. Do we want to supervise just the 4K programming that we're offering our students? Or do we want to supervise the staff and the program? So choices there. Okay. Anybody have a question on any of that so far? Okay. So um, what expectations for quality of programming for our 4K? A lot of those can be put into the contract, insurance, um, technology, all those kinds of pieces can be put into the contract. And um, in that way, um, people are, um, sites would be realizing what commitment they're making to not only have but upkeep certain services or expectations that they're in. And um, the biggest thing that was affirmed was that the early, what I call the early learning collaborative that um, I think um, um, our, our past member was really um, advocate of was to get the preschools and the daycares into the school and talk about what is the learning that takes place. And we, I started that last spring. We had one meeting and talking to them. They wanted to be um, two times a year, one in the fall, one in the spring. But to use that vehicle instead of creating a 4K advisory for the purpose of 4K, but to um, use an early learning piece was um, some of the best advice I got from um, the survey surveys that I did um, and then add members to that group that could help 
um, all kinds of early, early learning kind of pieces. So the two questions I'd really like to have you wrestle with today um, is do we want to offer 4K outside of our district school sites? And number two is, what level of transportation do we offer parents? Okay, then I'm going to let you hold on to those two questions for another second here. So my thought uh, to consider in answering those two questions, although they don't go right in line with what I'm going to suggest, but they have some impact on it, okay? So to modif modify the timeline, instead of determining the programming first, I was thinking, you know, maybe we should meet with the early learning collaborative group, which represents all the daycares and preschools. They all had someone in attendance except for one, and then I followed up with them. And um, overview, what are the key components of 4K? What are the pieces that we're deciding are going to be a part of our district contract with those services? And find out which of those constituents <coughs> would be interesting in, in partnering with us. And then create a communication plan, say in September, get that communication out there, and then in October, actually have the parents through a variety of means, could be parent-teacher conferences, ways that we already have parents coming in, public library as well as the informational meeting, I think would be a good idea, hold registration, and offer the parents the sites that are within their elementary school location because busing wise and cost wise that would be the best way to do that and find out how many people want their child to be at trailside that are in the trailside area how many want this day here or this preschool and to then be able to look at that data I'm not saying we're going to allow all those parents to have exactly what they want, but at least gather their first choice, maybe second choice, and see what, what does it show that our parents want, because we certainly have space in the buildings, but maybe there's other partners that A, are interested, and B, parents are interested in having their students there. So that's why I asked you the question, do you want them only in the school district? or do you want them also outside of this district? Okay. Are you very quick yet? Yes. Yeah, I thought our director a few months ago was going to be, we were going to check with the outside facilities, the existing groups that are already currently offering daycare, and you're coming back with whether they have space or not, and are they certified or not. Is that what we talked about? Because if, they're, if they don't have space, they're not certified. The one thing I thought well, was, do we have a space or not? Because I know we have one downsized, and do we have where they can dedicate a room just for this? Yeah. Well, I think we need to look a little bit more into the criteria that we want them to have because it's more than a space and a certified. Certified means that they have a certified teacher by the time August 2015, the first day of school rolls around. And space, let's talk about what other things besides space do they need in order to qualify for a contract with their school district. What kind of insurance do they have to carry? What kind of technology do they have to have? Right, but not all daycare preschools have certain levels of Technology, that was a huge piece that was a consideration for other daycare and preschools. You say that's a broad statement of what you're referring to. Are you saying they have to have wireless in the classroom? Are you saying, what are you saying? I'm assuming if you give them wireless components, they go, right? No, I think for the most part, we can dictate what requirements that they have to right. meet certain criteria right. to be eligible right. to do it. Yeah. And what, what Kathy's basically saying is here, let's establish what that exactly is in a contract. Then go to the daycare centers, the preschool providers, and say here, to be considered, this is what you need to have in place to get a contract. One, you know, do you even want to do it? 
based on this criteria. You know, will you be able to do it? And then go from there. So I think, and I, I when we talked last, I know what you're saying, we kind of figure yeah. mm -hmm. on a overall sentiment, is this something you would want to do? Which I think most of them would say, well, yeah, you know, I would want to throw my hat in the ring and be able to do that. But I think what Kathy's saying is, okay, we now need to be a little more specific and say this is exactly what you would need to do from A to Z to be eligible, to be part of this, and then let them, based on that, determine if they want to be part of it. Another piece that I'm hearing is that we want to make sure we have families wanting to go to that site right. where site X might be interested in it, but they, we don't have enough families to go there, so now we're in agreement with that location, but we don't have the interest. So I like the idea of partnering with parents also to know if we can fill that location and that, too. And then is that something that we would add to the criteria as well? You would need X number of students enrolled to be considered or I mean I think that all well, I don't think you would have to, but I think right. you're you way past yourself if you say you're gonna ask the parents that they like where you're gonna offer them to pay for their kids to go to school for four to the for K four. That doesn't make any sense at all. We're gonna have somebody from Rochester send a student to trail side because they like that facility better. No, I did say in the in the area of where their child will attend kindergarten. Yeah, but you also said you're going to should we have students going to the different facilities that they like. Right. The, 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 the parents, let's say my child goes to is, is scheduled to go to Evergreen for kindergarten. Then I would have the locations Evergreen Elementary School and any of the daycare or preschools that are are interested in partnering with us, fitting the criteria of our contract, um, in that Evergreen attendance area for busing purposes. I would think more and more thing that the parents are going to want to know is what will my student be doing when my student's not 4K? Well, and I think that's where. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, you know, I think that's where their opinion is going to come into play because I think a lot of parents will say here, I'd love if it was at ABC, you know, daycare because for the first half of the day they could go to 4K, and then for the second half of the day they would just stay there in daycare. Or so I think that's where. Or do we truck them from well, the thing. here to the daycare? You know, like I said, a lot of daycares, except in our area, furnish their own transportation. You go to. Um, most of them in Milwaukee and any of the other suburbs, you see their vans sitting right there. You know, I can see where, instead of doing that, saying, okay, fine, we can take um, Susie and Johnny and transport them to the daycare over here. You know, so that way, at least they're getting right to the daycare. You know, we don't know whether these daycares will meet any criteria or whether they even want to. They have yet to come to any of our meetings or committee meetings on it. They did have your, when you sat down with them, and that's been it. We've talked 4K for, Two, three years at least? They've come to the board meetings. Yeah. But they haven't talked to us. They've, all our phone numbers are there. They don't call us. I, I have talked to some. Um, but I, don't, I also don't think we've established an official, okay, this is when we need to sit down with you and really hash these things out. But I have to agree with what Kathy's saying is if we're going to sit down and have that conversation, we, we should have a pretty clear cut guidelines of what we're going to expect. We expect you have this much insurance. We expect you have wireless. We expect you have a certified teacher. Yeah, we need, we need guidelines. We're going to pay for the technology. We're going to pay for the wireless. We're going to pay for the iPads. Right? Anything they need to conduct that school, or what are you paying for? You're going to, Am typically, you're going to pay a per student right. fee and for them to deliver the service. And um, according to the 29 school districts, that could be anywhere from some set of thousand dollars, which it was, you know, to thirty-one hundred dollars that you're going to pay per student. Um, but you're paying that fee per student typically on the third Friday count, September and January. The physical building lease, basically, and it covers the person persons that are offering the service. Yeah. It doesn't cover curriculum books, it doesn't cover technology. Um, it would cover a setup fee and then her pupil cost. And then it's their responsibility to use that money wisely mm -hmm. to set it up based on our guidelines. Well I don't agree with paying a setup fee to preload a 
hundred thousand dollars in something who could claim bankruptcy the next day. At least in the school district, we own what we put into the district. Well, you do own what you are contracting and borrowing to them. That's you own saying. those materials. So what am I losing here? And if you have to put high-speed wireless that we did in kindergarten or something, what am I missing? We're not paying for it. We're still giving them the facilities and saying, look up. I don't know anybody who put, I mean, that's a good question. Right. Um, I know other districts have put technology pieces in, and the fee that they're paying the student per student fee is how they use that to fund all kinds of things. Right. Let's say they don't have wireless now. We aren't going to pay to put it in. We'll pay part of it for what our students are going to be using. We're not going to pay the whole thing. Well, I think my understanding of it has always been that we say here, we're going to pay you X dollars per student. These are the requirements you need to meet. You have to have wireless. You have to have desks. You have to have whatever it is. But that and then as a business, excellent. they're going to get X dollars per student. And they yeah. have to do it. It doesn't work that way. I mean, let's say they have uh, 10 students, right? right. And let's say we're going to say we're going to go on a share level. What's our current share level for? What's our share level for uh, pick that? Five per Classroom. Right, five is classroom. Okay, so we're gonna uh, say we let's say we have four iPads. They've got to go and spend uh, twenty four hundred dollars for iPads. So you're gonna pre cost twenty four hundred dollars for iPads, which they can't take. They're not gonna take a loan on that. They're not gonna take cash up front on it. They're running on pretty slim margins on these schools. I think yeah, it would be we're pretty low. It wouldn't be our budget. job to figure out their business practices or how they're going to do it. It would be our job to say this is the expectation and this is what you're going to get for yeah. student. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with it because right now we're left and right in Milwaukee, they care to what business overnight and they're offering solutions and also the school district is dealing with it. So I think the first question is, do you want to offer the, do you, because I'm not clear on this, do you want to offer 4K outside of our current elementary buildings. I would like to see us offer it. Maybe also. And I'd like to be out to one parent signing up and you know put them in their school boundaries. The one question I have about that is if the parent was going to transfer it on their own. Like let's say they already go to all about kids if they have a group field or something and they still go there. If they're parked on a box they would provide them on the transportation understanding we will not provide their transportation to them. Probably a via So just so we have a yes. that reflects that also because the kids yeah. are already so somewhere. I've got grandchildren that are in this district, but they drive these trails. Yes, that's where they start. Yeah. And the bus company currently does drop some students off at the here's if it's in their, uh, you know, um, in their route the in this area. Yeah. So I like that idea of being the community that they can decide if they have the, the thing that's laid out the contract that we see, um, if they have those. Right. Can visit, uh, 
certain people will staff over. You're just not in direct supervision of the staff. My experience is dropping into the 4Ks anytime I wanted to and being able to go in the classrooms and then talking to the owner of the daycare about what I saw and, you know, went well and didn't go well. I have to admit, uh, which I stated before, I think you know, if we didn't have room in our buildings, I'd say most definitely. If we have room in our buildings, we'd have more control over it. You know, I don't have a question that on insurance or anything, I'll pay a devil's advocate. Little Susie goes into Daycare X and gets hurt. Not only is she going to sue uh, Daycare X, we're next on the list to get sued. We don't have real control over what's going on in that building because we don't know. Um, the teacher hit uh, Little Susie. Do I know that? No. So now we're going to be, you know, we're sort of on the outside, but yet we're going to be named in that lawsuit really quick. Um, maybe down the road I can see it, but to get it off the ground, which I'd like to see, you know, like you said, next year we'd like to get it off the ground, having it in-house, and then as we go along, see if we should do it to the daycares. Uh, I'd like to just see it here. Uh, offering tax transportation, most definitely, I think we should. Uh, for what you said, I'd like the second choice where we're in charge of both, which I think that's what you would say on that one. So that's... We agree on a few things, we disagree on a few things. So that's I, I, have to, I, have, I feel entire I agree with Doug because while I love the, the idea of offering choice and offering parents choice, for a public school system, we need the control, we have the space, we can do it in our building. Life is a lot simpler that way. And I'd like to see in a few years our tenants going up where we're going to have to look outside. That would be just, you know, which would be nice. But I think once we get it off the ground, as we get it off the ground, then maybe we can start, uh, you know, teaming up with them in a year or two and saying, okay, this is our program now, this is what we got. You want to buy into it, that's fine, but, you know, this is all going to be all our requirements. At least we have it in-house right now and we can get it going without a big, you know, trying to hook up with daycare X, Y, and Z, and okay, now their teachers got to meet this requirements, they have to have all this stuff. I have two students here, four students there. I agree with you on some things, I don't agree with you on I don't think once you start it, you want to open it up and say, now that we're doing this, who wants to take over what we're currently offering? I don't like that idea at all. Either you start that way, you stay that way, or you just don't offer it at all. I don't agree with all of that going outside. Everybody else will change their business models to match what the public school is doing. For example, we went from half day kindergarten to full day kindergarten, it's still a lot of as I see it right now, stay all of us. Still consider this as half day if you want to. This is completely lack of also. I don't see as a again public school district for offering this. You like to take advantage of it and you send your student. We have to offer transportation, yes we do, under our current rules of transportation. Uh, I don't see where we modify it. I can't see going door to door. Uh, this is my big problem with 4K. I mean some of the students are very, very immature. Some cross section of that. I don't agree with uh, modifying what we do because we know that there is a bell curve in this whole thing anyways. Um, some parents will be at home, they'll take their student to the corner, wait with them. Other parents will have their student to daycare and they'll be trucked in. Um, other parents will wait for the student to uh, drop off and then they'll go to daycare. I mean, there'll be a lot of variations. We have to be precise in what we're saying. So I would agree that we just have it in the school already or paying the insurance, so there's no more insurance cost. We set them outside, we have the extra insurance. We already have the Wi-Fi in here, there's no adding Wi-Fi. Uh, at this point here, I don't see a huge positive in setting it outside. I, I, I truly think you feel bad that 4K will be implemented as far as a um, community level thing. I mean, these folks that uh, are lively, but, but cannot deter them with special students on other people's livelihoods, deal with special students. So I think right now I would recommend we just have it at our individual building to build the space. So I can't see where this would be an issue. I can see with the transportation, maybe in the morning when you know, all the kids in the neighbor are going, they go to the stop. But when they're going home all by themselves at, what, after three hours? 
um, that we would, you know, obviously it's going to be smaller buses that we would get them a little closer to the home. Well, I don't think that. We have some neighborhoods we don't have buses. I don't think that. I think what you do is you say our directive is, is we'll let your student off the bus if there's an adult there. If there's no adult there, you wait for a period of two to three minutes, and then you keep the student on the bus, you bring it back when you're done with school, and the school calls the parents and says, where are you? What about the Are they with walking, is what you're saying? Yeah. For like a Fairview or something like that? Yeah, but it used to be back to the running. Maybe we don't have buses over there. Right, right. So, I mean, just a four-year-old. You wouldn't let a four-year-old or a five-year-old walk all the way from school. Right. Right. Do we look at those? There's something different for operating buses. Fifth grade, right? Or 5K, they walk by themselves. Their parents are going to walk, right? I mean, if people are really pushing this, is it actually coming down? Yeah. People want to push this. Same with 4K. But yeah. I, I feel a little different about four-year-olds and some of those neighborhoods that we don't have busing and that we might want to consider a stop in some of those places. The other thing is, is busing going to be an issue because how many parents are going to be home or are they just going to be then transferred to a daycare? I'll agree with you. If we have space on a short bus that we're not using space and we can make a stop in that city, like Fairview or Foxwood Hills. Or maybe once we have registration, we can look at registration. Yeah, right, right. Prominent right. transportation needed, but I hope that we would look at I would agree with that because you're already out of all your own. And a little bit of that. The half day, it's going to be, they'll be the only ones on the bus. And I like so that you were saying, the parent needs to be there at the staff. Yeah, before you that's a good idea. But I would, I would say I would not deviate the ones that have do have busing because the majority of those was, are the very short line of sight walking distance on a lot of neighborhoods. So can we offer to get them across the street to a designated area? And yeah, move on the bus. I think it's a smart idea. But I wouldn't go anything after that. Just to add my two cents on the partnership, I personally would like to see us attempt it um, to come up with some criteria to see if any of the local providers are interested in meeting that. Um, I think there are some advantages to it with the daycare, the transportation, and uh, it can, can alleviate a lot of the things we were just talking about, but that would be my second. What do you feel comfortable?
parents uh, for the first season of this may have a strong feeling where they want to be in a uh, 4K preschool outside because they've been there. Whereas the other ones, maybe the year after that, never had their kids there. They've got them at a private daycare. I've had my kids both. I don't have a strong feeling either way. Um, the only thing I'm looking at is the facilities now that are not even utilized in the one. So I would say the parent input to me is a little less critical other than it impacts the first year. After that, it doesn't impact the other year in the 4K unless they are very young parents and four students coming up. Well, I just uh, want the input to be who's interested and who's going to send them. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Are we going to have 50? Are we going to have 150? Are we need to. Yeah, I'm not sure the easiest answer on that. You can pull what we've got now, that'd be nice in terms of what our students will be. But I think you're going to have to put some of sign in the highlighter, the newspaper, and other things. You're pulling up. What, one thing that would be interesting, and I don't know if the data you received from the other districts, if it's actually what they are paying providers per student, or they gave you that type of information? Yeah, some of them did. I asked for it. Okay. Some of them did. You know, we may just want to look at what they're paying, what we estimate our costs are of doing the in-house. You never know. The preschools may be a little leaner machines that they could do something like this for less money and it actually may be a cost savings as a district to outsource the service for food in house because we wouldn't have to hire a teacher, you know, and all the additional things. You know, even though we have an empty room, we still have to staff it and do all these sort of things with it. So it may be something else we want to look at and bring into the thought process when we're making that decision. One of the things I'm concerned about though is our need for total supervision. Yeah, I understand. You know, it's going to take our staff to go around to these sites and check on a lot. The one thing with the in-house that I, I, um, I put, you know, as you were asking for um, different thoughts, is the connection between the 4K teachers and the 5K teachers is really critical. So that's something that you can set meetings and attempt to do, but if they're actually in the local vicinity, that's really important. have students in another facility and all the facilities don't match, do you segment out your four K students away from the general population? Same thing you're saying because now if you go out there and little Timmy's bitten by a three year old running around or something that doesn't know better, now we have to have Jill she we write up a nurse report on that. You know, there's so many questions on that. So we know how to run a school. How do you interact with what's not there? Interesting topic, we'll put it in the other way. Second.